Looking for a password manager? NordPass safely stores all your passwords and helps you generate new ones. The autofill feature saves you time when logging in and synchronizes across all your devices. Visit nordpass.com forward slash legendvd to get the best offer or use code legendvd at checkout to get an additional month for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Raga Draga, Gorgut's boss as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana 4-4 legendary human boar from Baldur's Gate, saying each creature you control with a mana ability gets plus 2 plus 2. Whenever a creature we control with a mana ability attacks, we get to untap it, and whenever we cast a spell, if at least 7 mana was spent to cast it, we get to untap target creature, gets plus 7 plus 7, and trample until end of turn. So Raga Draga does it all, turns our small mana creatures into actual threats, and can also give us a nice finishing ability to close out the game. So our deck is going to be filled with a lot of cheap mana creatures to not only help us get to 7 mana to start casting those big finishers, but also to apply a bit of pressure thanks to that plus 2 plus 2 bonus. So taking a look at our deck, the bulk of it is going to be mana creatures, starting out at 1 mana with Gilded Goose, Sentinel and Lenor Elves, and then at 2 mana we've got a ton of them, with a Drover the Mighty, Druid of the Cowl, Naturalist, Karyotid, one of the better ones as it can often make 2 mana, Incubation Druid can also be adapted to potentially make 3 mana, we also have a few ways to put a plus 1 counter on it, so it can make 3 mana without having to adapt, we've got the Leaf Gilder, Leafkin Druid also often makes 2 mana, Mana Weft Sliver, we've got the Curator which can sometimes draw cards as well, so also one of the better 2 drops, we've got Naga Vitalist, the Mage Keeper can potentially make double green as well. Paradise Druid, always a safe investment. We've got the Taxidermist, which can maybe pick up a plus 3, plus 2 bonus. Sanctum Weaver has a couple enchantments to go with it. Skilled Nurture can potentially gain some life if we play a Dragon. Servant, a nice 2-2. Two -two. And then Florahedron can be played as a land, a Mystic. And finally, the Anarchomancer, not actually a mana creature, so does not get the plus 2, plus 2 bonus, but does help us double spell in the mid to late game. And then at 3 mana, we've got some more mana creatures. These can often produce more than just one mana. We've got Jugan Defends the Temple, which makes a mana creature on the first chapter, then distributes some plus one counters and gives us a nice finisher with a remnant of the Rising Star, which is also kind of its own win condition and mana sink. We've got a Lenor Visionary drawing when it enters. Marwyn is especially synergistic with a Raga Draga, as it will get that plus two plus two bonus, immediately tapping for three mana, and the more elves we play, which there are quite a few of in the deck, the bigger Marwyn gets and the more mana she can generate. If we ever get to give Marwyn the plus seven plus seven bonus and untap her, we can also generate a ton of mana, so definitely one of the better additions in the deck. We've got a Rishkar, which can also distribute some plus one counters to turn some of our non-mana creatures into mana creatures, so they also get the plus two bonus from Raga Draga. Archdruid has a bunch of elves to go with it. We've got Selvala, which also plays well with some of the larger creatures, can also function as a card draw engine. Circle of Dreams Druid can often make a ton of mana as well. Lanor Tribe, since we're heavy green, can still easily be cast on turn 3. And then we've got Canopy Tactician pumping all elves. And finally, Leafkin Avenger can also make more than one mana, and can also be a finisher with the 8 mana activated ability. Then the next category are the card draw engines, and we do need quite a few in the deck, so we can keep chaining together more and more mana creatures and make use of all that mana we generate, so we can keep cycling through the deck until we find a finisher to close out the game. So we've got Best Cherry to scry if we pay a green one casting a creature spell we get to draw, Guardian Project, Toski lets us draw if we hit the opponent with our creatures, Beast Whisper one of the better ones at 4 mana, then Primordial Sage and Soul of the Harvest, card draw engines at 6 mana, we've got Immortal Sun giving us a nice discount on all our spells, drawing an extra card each turn, shutting down all planeswalkers and giving our team a plus 1 plus 1 bonus. Great Henge is excellent in any creature heavy deck like this one, can often play it on the cheap and then all our creatures enter with an extra counter on them and to draw a card. And then we also have Nissa who shakes the world to combo with all the forests in our deck. And those forests will animate into 5 5 creatures with Raga Draga out, as they also count as mana creatures. And then we get to the actual finishers in our deck, including Sylvan Awakening, 3 mana sorcery which animates all our lands into 2 2 elemental creatures, but with Raga Draga, those will be 4 4 elemental creatures instead. We've got Angras Marauders as a 7 drop, which will trigger the last ability on Raga Draga, letting us untap a creature, giving it plus 7, plus 7, and trample until end of turn. And then with the Marauders, we get to double our damage output, so that's often enough to just present lethal on the spot. And same goes with Terror of Mount Velas, which will give our team double strike if the turn it enters. 
Then we've got Old Nabo to generate a ton of treasure, which can then help us empty our hand, especially coupled with a card draw engine. We have Thorn Mammoth as repeatable removal. Nyx Bloom Ancient will triple our mana production. We've got Symbiosis as a land or a sorcery to find a creature in the top 7, which will also trigger Raga Draga. We've got Memorial, which will give our team Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, protection from black and from red, so that can turn all our creatures into huge threats. And giving some of our mana creatures haste also means we can tap them for mana the turn we play them to help us empty our hand even more, coupled with a card draw engine. We've got Rejuvenation from the recent set, which can also put a ton of creatures in play. We've got Vorinclax, which will punish the opponent for tapping lands while doubling our mana production. Forerunners and Craterhoof will give our team a massive bonus when they come into play to often close out the game on the spot. And then Exponential Growth is also a fun one, if we can cast this for X equals 3 or 4, and give our creature the plus 7 bonus before potentially doubling its power multiple times, can also deal upwards of 100 damage. And then Finale of Devastation often wants to find creatures like Craterhoof to end the game on the spot. And then we have a few utility cards, including Heroic Intervention, which we can often cast after untapping our creatures with Raga Draga's second ability to protect the team, Rhythm of the Wild to make our creatures uncounterable and also give them haste or an extra plus one counter, Leyline great with any mana creatures to make even more mana, and Sarith also nice to give our creatures death touch as we can basically tap them at will or we can keep them untapped for hexproof instead. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, mainly have a green mana since we don't have a ton of red cards in the deck. We've got Castle Garenbrick, which is amazing here as we can often cast two three drops thanks to the ability or just ramp into one of our many six drops as well. Then we also have Poseju as a channel land, and the Lair of the Hydra can also be a nice mana sink, which also picks up that plus two plus two bonus, so creature lands in general are quite good in this deck, so that's also why we have Crawling Barons as another creature land that has a nice mana sink ability, and then a whole host of red-green dual lands. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Hourglass Coven, which uh, is a pretty interesting new addition. And yeah, I think we've got to keep. Can play Crossroads tapped, naming red. And then Scry. Do I want a mountain? I think we're looking for some sort of card draw engine or curve topper. Although playing a bunch of mana creatures into our commander could also work out. And then suppose mana weft is fine here. Okay, maybe attack for one more than Sanctum Weaver, as we don't have any enchantments to benefit from. Fen Lurker can take a card, and uh, probably fine with giving them a Sanctum Weaver. Guardian Project might be worth playing first, although not quite as explosive as um, playing more mana creatures, although... Thanks to Castle, if we play Guardian Project here, next turn we could double 3 drop and draw 2, which seems worth it. If they make us discard again, then we might have discarded land if we draw one great, if not we still have our commander as a potential play. Okay, so make 6 mana, and then Visionary gets to draw 2. And Rishkar, putting one counter on itself and one on the mana weft, probably. Okay. So we've got a nice card draw engine in play. Obliterator, okay. That's not easy for us to get past as a green creature deck. So, can't really get any chip shots in. We need to kill the opponent in one big attack, which is going to be tough. Do have Boseju to deal with Monument, but that doesn't really slow down the opponent playing their commander, as they would just get a land in return. So, can go for Rhythm, and then play Mystic, wondering if we can use our castle here. Yeah, I guess we can try this, and then use Castle, and then we might draw into more green creatures we can cast, give this haste so it can tap for mana right away. 
Poseidon we can channel thanks to Rishkar being legendary. Is it worth it to get rid of Monument though? Don't think it is. But we can still potentially channel for one mana. Davriel gonna make his discard. Land can go. And Disciple makes his discard once again. Get rid of Buseju, and then Bastiary will be another nice card draw engine here. Loneliness Defends the temple. Her. Okay, so play Bastiary. Then we can play our commander. And pay the mana to draw. Or we can get Defense the Temple down, although Riots doesn't apply to tokens, so we won't be able to tap this for mana right away. So probably fine to play our commander at that point. And then we'll pay the green. And uh, plus one counter or haste, I guess plus one counter means it makes mana with uh, Rishkar. And then we'll pass, since I don't really want to attack into Obliterator. But now with an exponential growth, we could potentially one-hit KO the opponent. So that's the hope. Discard Defensive Temple. Opponent still has two mana available. It's gonna cast down our Sliver. Okay, so we get to Scry. Great Henge, pretty great. Can essentially play it for free. And then, how much mana are we working with? So, double tap Q, float all our mana, then we have more mana creatures. So, X would equal 4. Yeah, I think that's enough. Target our largest creature. Untap itself, and that's 224 trample damage. Should be enough to get past the Phyrexian Obliterator. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing the Sentinel Worm Dragon deck. This hand has a turn 1 Elves, which is exciting, although we're missing any other cheap creatures, so we can play turn 2 best cherry. Don't have red for Raga Draga either, so really hoping to find another accelerant in the first few draw steps. I'll try it. We do also get to scry with best cherry to help us. We'll follow Haven for ramp. So next turn we can play Sereth at the very least. Although not as good as finding another ramp creature and potentially playing a mortal sun. Opponent looking at our basics, maybe they've got a town racer tyrant in hand, looking for a non-basic to target. It's gonna be a spit flame taking out elves instead. That's a setback. I'll take a mana weft, can play it and draw a card. And then next turn maybe Sereth draw a card, or we could play Raga Draga. Thunderbreak Regents. 4-4 four, four Flyer, opponent misses a land drop, and I'm probably okay keeping a mountain on top. So, yeah, I guess we can play Raga Draga, draw a card, and then next turn Sereth. Or maybe go for Immortal Sun. Beast Whisper, another card draw engine. Five mana now. If we get a Chromos Memorial down, protection from red especially gonna be important. And yeah, there's the Town Racer Tyrant we suspected. Didn't keep up enough red to get back their removal. And now a Great Henge, I guess we'll keep. 
Great Henge costing 5 mana. Put taps for 2, so essentially 3 mana to get it down. And then we could play Sarith afterwards. Or we can get Immortal Sun down first. Kind of like Great Henge into Beast Whisper. Although I guess we'll be 1 mana short of that. So... At that point, maybe Immortal Sun first, and then we can attack for five. And it's going to be even easier to get a Great Henge down next turn. Orb for haste, and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay. Take eight. But we've got an exciting turn coming up. And a Canopy Tactician. It's not really a finisher, but Memorial giving it haste makes it pretty much free, so I guess it's good enough. Okay, sequencing. So Great Henge essentially costs us one mana. Then I would like to get Memorial down to give other creatures haste. How does that work? So Great Henge into Memorial leaves us tapped out. So that doesn't quite do it. So we may not be able to do it this turn, although getting that flying and protection from red seems critical. So maybe I just play Memorial. And then can still attack thanks to Vigilance and stay back. And then next turn get Henge down. Yeah, seems like maybe that's the play. And we'll pass. Then next turn we should be able to easily attack for lethal, thanks to protection from red, haste and flying, getting past all their dragons. And now we're not in any immediate risk of dying to this orb giving a large dragon haste. Faceless Agents finds another dragon. Can get back Spit Flame, but yeah, protection from red means they can't take anything out. So they're not going to get it back. Scale Singer. And an Earthquake Dragon, okay. That with haste off uh, orb would have been problematic. Don't think we need Rover. But this should be trivial now. Can play Great Henge. Followed by maybe a Beast Whisper. Play Tactician. This can make a bunch of mana to play more mana creatures out. Draw of Beast Whisper and Great Henge. Play Servants. And uh, yeah, that should be good enough here. Could also go for Leafkin or we can just attack. They've got one blocker with the Earthquake Dragon here. But the rest is going to go through thanks to protection from red. Yeah, we definitely got lucky that some lands came into play tapped, and uh, of course the memorial also putting in a ton of work to keep us alive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kira, a great glass spinner. And that shouldn't be too much of a problem since our deck doesn't have much interaction to begin with. This hand has potential. Especially with a turn one Lenor Elves. 
So turn two probably want to play Karyatid so we can access a red mana. Although now Rockfall Veil solves that problem. Although if we play Karyatid, we can tap it for two mana next turn after playing our commander. Okay, so I think we'll go for Ranga Dranga, hit for three, and then play probably Leafkin Druid. So we're beating down and ramping at the same time. Next turn Castle also gives us a small mana boost. So yeah, off to kind of an ideal start. But yeah, blue decks can uh, easily have some annoying answers. Mystic Subduel one of them, so we lose our abilities, including the ones to pump our creatures. And a Delver of Secrets. Alrighty. So we'll have to decide between Sage and Soul of the Harvest. Probably prefer Sage as it's on cast in case of counterspells. And then play Incubation Druids, see what we draw. And uh, attack for two. Okay, so next turn if we can resolve soul, we'll have two nice card draw engines. An offer you can't refuse can hit our Sylvan Awakening. Now the Kraken is gonna start making tentacles. And our opponent's beating down in the air. Okay, so step one, soul of the harvest. Step two is gonna be sentinel. And a Thorn Mammoth, also quite nice. We can keep chaining together all these cheap creatures, draw more cards, and eventually find one of our finishers to end the game. So, despite losing our commander here, things still going according to plan. Just got a dodge a river's rebuke. And Grass Marauder is also going to be quite powerful. And I guess we'll hit for four. Tome of Legends draws. Triggers Nadir Kraken. So if they pay the one, I'll be happy. Because that means no river's rebuke, which is one of the best ways to have to get back in the game. But another Kraken is getting larger. And the one ones can kind of chum block while they keep attacking us in the air. Although once we play Thorn Mammoth, we can maybe deal with uh, another Kraken. And our opponent explodes, yeah, double six mana card draw engine after a nice explosive start, too much for them to overcome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tiamat, five color dragons. This hand is missing some early accelerants, so we'll mulligan. This is better. And then probably hang on to Florahedron as a creature to maybe draw with a Beast Whisper. And then turn to Paradise Druid, can maybe set up turn 3, Beast Whisper. Opponent access to all 5 colors, can expect a few sweeper effects, which are going to be tough to beat. For now a Dragon Servant to discount their dragons. Okay, let's uh, give Beast Whisper a shot.
Cabaretti Revels. Can help them find more creatures. For now, kind of liking Rishkar. So we can also tap our Beast Whisper for mana. And then we can still play Florahedron if we'd like. And attack for three. And yeah, next turn we can already cast some of our seven drops, like Old and Auburn. Put on passes with four mana up. If we expect a counter spell, we could get a rhythm in play first. Let's see here. Can play our commander and then still have five mana available. Yeah, I guess going Rhythm into our commander is fine. But it doesn't look like they have any interaction here. So... Player commander, attack. And then we can still play a Leafkin. Give this haste. Bone chumps. And then we'll go for a counter now. Could have gone for haste and then still tap it for two mana, but that's not really going to help us here. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, very explosive start thanks to Beast Whisper and Rishkar. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Sorin, a vengeful bloodlord, and our hand seems acceptable. A couple mana creatures into an Angrath's Marauders. And then sequencing our lands. Can start with Crossroads tapped, turn to Stomping Ground, and hope to pick up another land along the way. Although Beast Whisper is difficult to turn down, so we'll keep that. And then we'll probably go Vitalists into a uh, Lanaror Tribe to get the most mana. Opponent with an Orator. And Castle comes into play untapped thanks to Stomping Ground, so we could already play Beast Whisper. Although I'm not opposed to just playing a Lanaror Tribe so we can more efficiently double spell next turn. So yeah, close call. Next turn we can also use Castle Garenbrig, so I guess the upside of playing Whisper now is that next turn we can play both 3-drops pretty easily. If I play a Tribe, then next turn I guess we could still double spell. So yeah, close call. I'll go with a Tribe here. In case I have removal, I would rather have them kill Tribe than uh, Beast Whisper. Can be Voice of the Blessed picking up a counter. Opponent going heavy on the life gain synergy, so not necessarily Vampire Tribal. Okay, let's fetch up an extra red source perhaps. And then we want to make use of Castle. So we can play Beast Whisper, play Rishkar. Could also go for our commander instead. Although Rishkar again adds more mana for next turn, which is probably worthwhile. And then we'll pass it back for now. Okay, so next turn we could do some serious damage. Hopefully the opponent just plays their commander. Raise the alarm. We'll gain some life with Orator to grow Voice of the Blessed. But should be able to go over the top of this 5 5. Okay, Frexen Tower. Two more mana with those tokens. So we could see some removal. Mortify kills Lenor Tribe. That's fine. Still have quite a bit of mana thanks to Rishkar. So let's see here. We've got 8 mana total for creatures. 
could play Angrass Marauders, could play our commander to maybe set up some attacks first, though the Voice of the Blast could trade for Rishkar. And they could try and set up a double block, so that may not be necessary. We do kind of just want to develop our mana so we can set up a lethal exponential growth. So, I guess double spelling Commander and Taxidermist might be good enough. Guardian Projects. Let's go with the uh, Taxidermists. And then... Do I want to attack for 5? Trade for Voice of the Blessed? Sure. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we have a couple options. Sylvan Awakening. Can animate some of our lanes. Can go for an exponential growth. Which may just be lethal. Angras Marauder is also quite good, so... Just need to worry about Frexian Tower casting some black removal spell at instant speed. Opponent passes. If I go for Sylvan Awakening, all my lands turn into essentially 4-4 creatures, thanks to Raga Draga. Or we can go for Angrath's Marauders. Double after giving 7 additional power, which is not quite lethal, whereas exponential growth definitely is, if we can resolve it. So I think we just go for Glory here. And try and set up a lethal exponential growth. So tap all our mana. X equals 4. And target itself. Up to 11. Up to 176 and trample. And yeah, looks like that's good enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Sentinel Worm once again. And we've got a nice start with turn 1 Elves. Can try and get an early Toski to kind of snowball card advantage. But for now, Elves, turn 2, can play Florahedron. And then Raga Draga, perhaps. Although now the 1-4 can block our 3-3 three, three creatures quite easily. So do we still want to play Raga Draga? Or do we go for a different approach? If I play Toski, next turn play Raga Draga, is that better? I think we'd rather have the extra 4-4 four, four attacker as opposed to 1-1. One, one. And then no downside in attacking. Possible they respect a uh, pump spell, but... Put in blocks. Okay, so next turn play Toski, attack, and then play Sliver second main. Interventions, good insurance. So they can soak up a little bit of damage. Nope, jumping Raga Draga. And they've got a Snakeskin Veil. Fair enough. So could keep up Intervention, could play Mana Wefts, which gets us closer to Rejuvenation. Or even Sanctum Weaver, although Mana Weft attacks a little bit better. I think we still run it out here. And then maybe next turn it's worth it to keep up Intervention. Although Terror of Mount Vila is also looking good. Especially with Toski, could draw a ton of cards. Blazing Sky is acceptable, and an Outcast. Not gonna trigger just yet. So yeah, Mount Vilas, and then can attack with a team. Although I guess we wouldn't have access to Intervention anymore, so they could set up some reasonable blocks. 
again soak up Toski and then trade Mana Weft and Blazing Sky. I think we'll go for Terror and then next turn Rejuvenation gonna be a little bit more exciting. Can untap Lenor Elves and uh, yeah, Smash. We'll still have Intervention available. If not, we can play a Sanctum Weaver. But we're gonna draw a ton of cards in the process too here. Opponent triple blocks Lenor Elves. So, yeah, I guess we'll just kill everything. Although we don't have to kill Blazing Sky if we want to deny them the three treasure tokens. Although they might just be dead here with Double Strike and Trample. Elves tramples for 10, and then we still have more than enough to close out the game. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw in the mirror match. This hand is missing a 2 mana ramp creature, so I don't think we can keep. Also missing red. This is better. Still missing red for our commander, but a Sanctum Weaver will help. And then Marwyn, quite explosive alongside our commander as well. Now I'm kind of liking Curator, although Sanctum Weaver could make two mana with a Guardian Project out. Yeah, I guess Sanctum Weaver is okay. Probably gonna play Marwyn next turn anyway. Canopy Tactician also tempting here. Makes slightly better use of our mana. Could also double spell Curator Nurture. Is that better? Next turn, our opponent can play their commander. Kind of want to just go over the top with Marwyn. And then we have a bunch of elves we can maybe play afterwards to also pump it even more. Okay, so we'll take six. And hopefully that's it. Okay. So step one. Play Raga Draga. Or do we want to sequence slightly differently? So sure, we'll try this. Okay. And then next turn we could already play Crater Hoof. Opponent with a Titan of Industry, pumps their Vitalists, can make a Rhino, and yeah, also destroying our enchantment here. So not bad. A land is useful. Okay, so we have a few options here, although just casting Crater Hoof seems pretty decent. We would have four creatures, give the team plus four plus four. We also get to give another creature plus seven plus seven and untap it. So then we could get in for at least 30 damage of Trample. Other opponent may be able to survive. Could also untap Marwyn and then Marwyn would have a ton of power to help us empty out our hand even more. So that's another option. Although maybe just attacking is good enough here. So either way, we'll start by casting Crater Hoof. And our opponent explodes. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, so colorless ramp deck. Our hand doesn't even have triple green for Circle of Dreams Druids, so I don't think we can keep. This is better. Much better. Fetch up a Forests. And then uh, turn two Vitalist, turn three, probably Circle of Dreams. And a colorless deck, not gonna have a ton of cheap interaction. Blast Zone could maybe come in handy. But for now we have a wide range of mana values. And getting it up to 3 is not gonna be easy. So Relco Progenitus gonna be annoying for a while until our opponents trades it in for an extra card. Unlicensed hearse, more graveyard hate. And uh, let's see here, don't have a ton of elves. So I think Circle of Dreams is probably going to be better than Elvish Archdruid for now. And we can attack for one. I 
and then we should be able to double spell at the very least next turn. Opponent does get to choose one basic lands to include in their deck since there's no wastes on Arena. So that's a bit different from, I guess, Commander. Pilgrim's Eye gets another forest. Okay. So we could already play a Raga Draga, attack for a bunch, and then still have four mana, essentially. And our opponent packs it in, so... Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a pretty tough matchup for the Coldless Ramp deck, as we just have more efficient ways of generating mana. And uh, yeah, they're going to lack the interaction they need to keep up. So this turn, if we're going to take a closer look, is it worth it to play Raga Draga to keep up the pressure, or do we develop our mana first? I guess since we do want to play Marauders with our commander in play, it's probably fine to play this, plus maybe an Archdruid, and then... And next turn we could already play more otters, which would then give a creature plus seven plus seven trample, double its damage output, and our opponent should be close to that already. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing the first sliver five color deck. And our hand has potential. Turn two naturalists. Turn three, maybe Circle of Dreams. Can help us ramp out some of these expensive creatures. I guess we can play our Curator now. Maybe draw some cards in the process. Just kind of a strictly better version of the Naturalist. Metallic Mimic in naming Sliver, so we're definitely up against a legitimate Sliver tribal deck. Play our Circle of Dreams. And yeah, hopefully next turn can double spell, maybe Leilang can be played as well. Blur Sliver for Hastes. And our opponent can get in for 5 damage here. Okay. So, let's say we play a Narcomancer first. Then Circle of Dreams taps for 3. We can play 3 mana Leyline and still play Naturalists. That's probably a fine sequence here. We even get to draw. The only Goblin Shaman in our deck. And uh, yeah, I think Leyline is still fine here. Alternatively, you could have gotten a Guardian Project in play, but now we're setting up for some of our curve toppers. Hopefully they don't have removal. Duress can take our Guardian project, but sees Crater Hoof and Forerunners, so they cannot be too happy about that. Predatory Sliver, and yeah, opponent concedes, knowing what's incoming here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the Sentinel Worm once again. This hand's missing a 2-mana Accelerant, so I don't think we can keep this is better. Turn 1 can lead with a Sentinel. And then turn 2 we can go Leafkin plus Gilded Goose now. Got our card draw engine and a nice curve topper. But the dragon deck is a scary one to face. The next turn we could already play our commander and get a nice attack in. Or we can maybe try and get a Beast Whisper going first. It's gonna be a Broken Bones dealing with our food token. That's okay. And a Dragon Hatchling. Okay, get to untap. Memorial's a nice one to ramp into. So we have a few options on how to sequence here. I think I do want to get our Gorgod's boss in play this turn if we can. And then I think we'll tap like so. Play Gorgods. And then we can attack with Leafkin. It'll untap. And then we still keep up Intervention for 2 mana. 
as we now control four or more creatures. So we can potentially save the team from a sweeper. And then we can maybe start making food tokens to get closer to seven mana. Okay, gold span is a scary one. Gets to attack, make a treasure. So our goal is going to be to get a mammoth in play as soon as possible. We'll need an untap land for that to work. Alright, there we go. So step one is going to be attack with a team and then we'll get to untap our creatures and still play either Memorial or Mammoth. Memorial is also reasonable, but I think I prefer just killing Goldspan for now. Sank with all. Alternatively, we could have cast our 7 drop, so we get the plus 7 and untap bonus. Although we also get in 7 damage by just attacking. So I'm not sure if it really made a difference. Bones at 12. And we'll play a Thorn Mammoth. And then we can untap... Leafkin drew it so it can cast Intervention as well. And our opponent packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play in the mirror match. And having turn 1 elves is quite powerful. So we'll give it a shot. We are missing a big curve topper. So hopefully we can find one soon enough. And then turn two, maybe carry it so it can make more mana. Hit for one. Although we'll have to tap carry it right now to make red to play our commander in the first place. Opponents got their own carry Symbiosis can be our curve topper. So play Raga Draga, hit for three. And next turn we can add a couple more mana dorks to the battlefield. Intervention's useful. So... I guess we'll go with Taxidermist Paradise Druids. Could attack with a team, but don't really want to waste Intervention to save one mana creature. But if they want to trade commanders, then I'll fire it off. Opponent takes it. Okay, and then next turn, Symbiosis hopefully finds something exciting. Crater Hoof would do the job. Beanstalk for ramp. Also 7 drop to trigger the last ability, so still makes sense as an inclusion here. And the Revels, okay. Get to untap. And Symbiosis, untap Carrotid, and find nothing too exciting, but enough to prompt a concession regardless, as our opponent might just be dead here. Yeah, if we attack with the team, they seem pretty dead. All right. So yeah, we got to see our red-green Raga Draga deck in action. And yeah, if you're off to a quick start and you don't face too many sweepers along the way, the deck can be incredibly powerful, offering a nice mix of acceleration as well as a bit of pressure thanks to that plus two plus two bonus. So you aren't necessarily left with a bunch of mana dorks that cannot attack. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.